Hey guys, Mr. Freedy here here, and welcome to today's loadout video. Now, in today's loadout, I'd like to bring you a character that was meant to be introduced into Time for Two's campaign, that was meant to be hunting down the main protagonist, and his name is Jester. Now, Jester is a facious syndicate who was meant to be hired by IMC to hunt you down in the main campaign and basically stop you from advancing onto the fold weapons. However, for some unknown reason, it wasn't introduced into the main campaign and at this point the only way for us to actually know who he is and what he was capable of is actually looking at the McFarlane toys as he is a figure at that point. All we know for a brief bit of history about him is that he was meant to be a highly decorated IMC soldier that was I believe either through an incident or either through pure volunteering signed up for the Simulacrum program and basically transform his normal body into a Simulacrum body to basically have the capability of hunting pilots without fear of ever damaging himself or having sustained damage that could be long lasting. And now, here he is. This is my attempt at him. And one thing I can definitely say is that please don't hate me as I am using the G2 in this case as as pretty much shown for his McFarlane toy. He does use the G2 as the main primary. So please don't hate me for it. You can, like I said, always change the main primary to something else if you don't want to lure yourself down to that. But if you want to go 100% with a roleplay or cosplay as Jester, then by all means, stay tuned and listen to out what I've got to show for you. Now, in terms of loadout, this class is going to be face shift, as that's pretty much shown from the McFarlane toy, as you can pretty much recognise from the face and the scarf that he wears. His primary is the G2A5, his secondary is the P2016 or the MGL. Now, I'll let you decide with the secondary, as there's not much information laid out to indicate what secondary he used. Now considering that he is a bounty hunter at best, he would most likely be using, I guess, both in different types of situations. So if you're going to be playing pilot versus pilot mode, I suggest you go with the P2016, kind of act as a backup for close range situations. Or if you're going to be going up against titans, like in attrition, then I suggest you go with the MGL at best. If you don't want to, by all means do change them to fit whatever playstyle you want. But do remember he is a bounty hunter. So a bounty, hunter, a bounty hunter would be prepared for whatever scenario is brought up to him. His boost now, I decided to go with the tip mines at best. Now considering that he is hunting down people, I guess the tip mines will probably fit in that role since they do have the ability to hunt down people and I, I suggest blow them up at best. Though that's a bit too much at best, I guess it, comes, it kind of fits into the role. If not, by all means you can use map hack. That comes in handy and that kind of does fit in for the bounty hunter to allow to hunt down his prey and know where that they are hiding. The ordnance, I chose Argonades. Now Argonades basically allow me to slow down opponents and this basically allows me to slow them down to the point of where I'll be able to catch up with them and either finish them off with a melee or basically shoot them and finish them off them then. I'll let you decide as uh, you can always use the satchel. The satchel seems like a kind of standard gear that would Jester would use to kind of set up as a booby trap or throw into areas that you expect enemy deployments would be, but I'll, let that, I'll leave this up to you to decide. A Titan now, I decided to go with Ronin. Now, compared to all the Titans, it was either Ronin or Monarch to go with. Now you can still go with Monarch, as Monarch kind of, as Monarch seemed to be the kind of all round the Titan that many pilots seem to be using in Titan 2. However, seeing that Jester is a bounty hunter, and let's be real, a bounty hunter wants to be quick and lethal and wants to get there as quickly as possible. A Ronin kind of fits the bill. A Ronin is capable of taking out pilots or AI on the floor rather quickly. He has the ability to phase in and out of dimensions, same as what Jester is capable of doing. He has a close range shotgun, so this will basically allow him to clean up people that may be on rooftops and such. And he also has the ability to use an arc wave that can basically paralyze a Titan or paralyze his target just enough to go in there and basically capture them. So that's kind of how I justify using Ronin. If you don't want to, by all means go ahead and use Ronin instead. If you don't want to, by ahead, go ahead and use Monarch instead. Monarch is similar and Monarch kind of fits in the role as being an all-rounder Titan that's capable of also filling in the role that Ronin's capable of doing. Your pilot kits now is going to be health regeneration and hover. Now hover, I'm not 100% sure if this is what the kit he used. However, like I said, do you go ahead and use what you want as there's not really much indication. 
Now, I only chose Hover because of McFarlane toy. That's kind of what he looks like in the case, but at the same time, he could just be simply jumping. So, do be aware and do just choose what you feel is necessary for your loadout. Now, in terms of gameplay, you kind of just want to play it as a passive but also a very aggressive. You have Ronin that's capable of cleaning up AI and killing pilots within a few minutes or a short second if you like. And you kind of want to maximize that to your full potential. Now with phase shift, this basically allows you to be kind of reckless and aggressive. You can use your phase shift to get in and out of danger and it also allows you to get in close to enemy pilots and kind of hunt them down with G2. Now say for example you're chasing a pilot down and they're running away from you, you can use your G2 to catch up with them and take them out of long distances. If for example on the other hand that they're chasing you down, you can pretty much use your phase shift and basically phase out of the danger. And then use your main primary or your secondary depending on what it is to take them out. And in many cases this basically means that you can take on multiple opponents. So you don't have to worry about you know running away and finding your own friendlies. No, you're capable and prepared to take on multiple people. And this also brings in the case with your boots as well. Your tip mines are kind of lethal as well. Throw your tip mines behind enemy lines. If they don't know where it's coming from, they're going to catch up by surprise. And this will basically allow you to net a number of kills, whether AI or pilots. So use this to your advantage. When it's chaotic, throw your tip mines in the areas that you don't expect them to, you know, go. And then, say for example, when they're putting on the fire onto you, fire back just to you know indicate that yeah you're here and hopefully your tip mice will notice and go towards the enemy and blow them up thus creating a path for you and your friendlies to go in and clean up with the kills also do be aware that you can also kind of trick people as well when using your phase shift one thing i've noticed is that when you phase shift it kind of shows you where your location is through the smoke now what i've re what i realized is that if you're wall running and you're about to get caught out if you phase shift but at the same time, but then hover at the same time, this will basically allow you to kind of trick the opponent. So while they're wall running behind you and you phase shift out and then you hover, they'll probably wall run out in front of you or onto the ground. They don't know where you are, but then this basically allow you the capability or the ability to locate where they are and take them out rather quickly. And this does work depending on the player. Against a newer player, this will work 100% of the time. Against a player that's a bit more skilled, this may work 50% of the time, depending on the map and depending on how they react in the situation. So they may be too chaotic to stay in the area. So it may make you too much of a big target, or it actually may, might make the enemy player a big target. It also does come in handy when you are you want to kind of play like a more slower role. So kind of like if you want to snipe instead using your weapon, then by all means, find a nice area that doesn't have any enemies or players nearby. Find an area that has a lot of buildings and a lot of, I say, structure and protection. And basically use that area to kind of jump over, hover, and take out people from long distances. Do be aware though, that your hover does have kind of limited fuel, so you can't spam it and be like, yeah, you can do this multiple times. You have to kind of be aware of where you're aiming and be aware of your surroundings take out your opponent and then kind of leave the area as quickly as possible because you can spam it however 9 times out of 10 when you do use it by accident it does put you into a difficult situation and say for example if you're chasing an opponent and they jump and you jump as well and you decide to hover by aiming as well it kind of puts you into a situation where they may be able to kill you quickly before you're able to re-aim again and it does come up and it does happen a lot so do be aware about hover and how sometimes it can be very inconsistent when you're kind of running or chasing somebody down and they're firing upon you and you want to get out of danger. But like always, you can always change it to however you want. You don't have to go with hover, you can go with loop profile if you want to, but that's just what I chose to go with. And it does work, honestly it really does work and it does do wonders. So in general, so play is little aggressive. Play it as if you were some kind of bounty hunter. Scout the area, know where the enemies are, and let your team or your friendlies go off and take the firepower. Then what you want to do is once you scout the area, then you want to go to work. Take out as many people from left, right, center. You have a G2 that's capable of close, medium, and long range engagements. Although terrible with hip fire, it's capable and amazing with ADS. Use that to your advantage. Take out people from long distances, build up your meter, build up your core meter, 
to the point where you get your tip mines. Use your tip mines to call your more chaos, but only use them when you know your teammates are nearby. Let your teammates take up the damage. And then you can throw your tip mines behind enemy lines and they can do the extra damage, thus allowing your teammates to push through and do more damage. Remember use your phase shift to phase in and out danger. This will basically become a major uh, this will become a major tool for you to survive. And also remember that you can use hover as well to kind of trick your opponents. So they may think you're going one way when actually you're above them, thus allowing you to actually execute them there and then on the spot. Then once you get enough call meter, activate and cool down your Ronin Titan. By having your Ronin Titan down, this will basically allow you to go in and clean up any AI and any pilots left around. And if everything goes as planned, everyone will lay wasted on the ground and you'll be the only sole survivor, thus completing your own mission. If it doesn't go as planned, then you're not being aggressive. So that is the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then leave a like, a comment and subscribe for more. If you didn't, then by all means leave a dislike. I understand and I know where to improve on in the nearby future. And once again guys, thank you all for watching and I do hope to see you all again soon.